When he came to, Zenobia was standing over him. Why didn't you take me to the base to be interrogated? She demanded. Do you know what's left of people they interrogate? This is some trick, isn't it? To make me fall for you again. Well, I won't. Oh, go on then. Scurry back to your ravens. I can't stop you. But strangely, she didn't. As Renato set off to find the Farfarer, she followed him, keeping just out of sight of the ravens. What else could you hook? Raven. Eat the rebel! Caught another. Imagine getting a horse up in one of these things. It will be cursing a blue streak. As Renato stopped to sniff the wind, Zenobia came up, still mad. Did you really think you'd just talk me into betraying my father? Oh yeah, sure, that was exactly my plan. Then why aren't you even talking to me? Because I've never talked you into anything in my life. They're gonna court-martial you for letting me go. He caught a whiff of the Farfarer. Wet rope, tar, and a cask of Scoble ale he'd spilt last year. It was that way.
Renato's paws were getting numb. Calaveras really didn't want company, did he? Renato wondered if he should have taken Zenobia to the rebel base for real. Maybe she wasn't playing him after all. After the bleak talk about the Emperor's dark secrets, he was regretting his suspicion. Sure enough, the Farfarer had crashed in some rocks. There was no sign of Lupino. Zenobia caught up. All that kid stuff in sword food school. And look, you know, look, that's the past. We, we, we're adults now. We, we have duties to other people. We have destinies. What are you talking about? And you are the most arrogant, slow-witted, light-fingered, mercenary, a moral, reckless... Run away with me, said Renardo, and he realized he meant it. Well, just like that, she demanded. I will, if you will. So she kissed him. And it was the best kiss he'd ever had. They held hands as they boarded the farfare. Renardo felt light-hearted, like the winds that were playing the rigging like a balalaika. But Lapino... I need to go back to Lupino, he said, suddenly realizing he could have been captured. A prisoner. He's not. How did you know? He saw something in her eyes he didn't understand. He fell, didn't he? Into the abyss. She looked away. Wouldn't answer. But then a bolt smashed through the Farfarer's keel. The broken ship plummeted out of the clouds. Renato picked himself off the deck. They were alive. We have to get to my private ship, she said. Do you trust me? I guess I must, he said. You go on ahead. Clear the path, she said. I can't kill my own soldiers. He wanted to say that he didn't trust her, that he had no idea what he was getting into. But he had no choice, did he? He was following his heart. That's what it means to be a hero. You had to follow your heart. missed his old skills. He welcomed them back like it was at a reunion.
had to be something useful in these things, didn't there? His mother had told him to eat his fruit. their breath. It was strange to be so close to her. What are you thinking? He asked. I'm trying very hard not to think. Me too, he said. Up ahead, he could see the thin silver of Zenobia's personal ship. It looked fast. They would leave all this behind.
This was much easier than free climbing. As they reached her ship, Renato suddenly felt a sharp pain in his stomach. He was surprised to see a crossbow bolt sticking out of it. I was going to lead the Empire to a secret base, said Lapino. But no, you had to screw up my plan because you've still got a thing for her. Renato stared at Zenobia. The kiss, was it real? She said with a look of indescribable sorrow. She gestured and said an arcane word, and Lapido went flying into the abyss, screaming, I'm telling your father! Then she knelt down to cradle his head, and her paws felt very soft and warm. Okay, that was weird. He could have sworn he'd just died. Instead, he was on the Farfarer, sailing away from Ubar. And it was still burning. He'd fled burning Ubar years ago, hadn't he? And now he was back there. Had all those years fighting the Empire been nothing but a vision into the future? A useful vision, if it was true. He'd learned something. Lapino was a traitor. Renato had suspected there was something wrong with the mad rabbit, but now he knew there was malice behind his goofiness. He'd made bad choices, but now, when the real battle came, he wouldn't make those choices. He wouldn't make the same mistake twice. The book's pages began to flip backwards, towards the beginning. And he realized that his adventure was just beginning. The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Or so a scholar in the mountains had told him. Surely the weapon that banished the lost gods could defeat the Emperor. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Emperor had brought the Sky Ripper pieces up out of ancient burial by his obscene rituals. Could this be where the Iblis Stone was hidden? Someone better get it before he does, thought Renardo. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course. Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. But could Renato really leave an old friend to the Ravens 